And today, let's have a look at bending plastic. Do-it-yourself, homemade strip heaters. Four-footer, four-footer, two-footer, six-footer. All with 20 thousandths nichrome wire. You're going to need a rheostat and just a couple little accoutrements, little tiny wooden fixtures that'll make your life a little easier. Let's have a closer look. So let's talk about how to string your nichrome wire. You're going to need some really <laughs> fragile springs, if you will. These are incredibly easy to manipulate. I would guess it's something on the neighborhood of probably four ounces. We'll start to elongate this, maybe five. Very, very lightweight, you need that. This is gonna take up the slop as our spring grows. So you're gonna need two of these, one at each end. And then you make your nichrome wire with two pieces of nichrome, put it in your drill, twist it until you got a, a good twist going on it, and then you make a loop in one end, put it onto your spring. Okay. Now we have that end secured, and I'm going to show you how you make the other end to the right length. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to put a tiny load. Can you see that? If I put my finger here, you can probably see it better. I'm going to only put a quarter of an inch of load on that spring on the other end. And then I'm going to bend it around this end of the spring. So if you take your slop out of here and hold that spring up against the other, up against the nail, you kind of get about a quarter of an inch and we're going to put a bend line in it and see what we have. And on the other end, the other spring is moving easily. Let me move you over to the other end here. Check out what's happening on this end. As I pull on the other end, you can see that that spring is growing, right? And as I push on it and go the other way, looks like we have perfect tension there. The only way to really tell 100% for sure is to give it the actual voltage needed to warm this up. It used to be 16 to 19 volts AC when I was using 20 thousandths wire. But now I'm going to have to remark this because this is 15 thousandths wire. So I would assume, and I'm sure you will too, that our voltage should be lower with finer wire. So you guys, whatever you do, don't plug this in the wall. You're going to hit this with massive voltage that's five times what this can take, and it'll pop this wire right away. Instantly it'll be junk. So be careful not to do that. Your rheostat must always start at zero when you turn it on. Never start at anything but zero. If you're smart, and it's an expensive game, you'll call up the Staco people. S-T-A-C-O. That'll give you an idea what you're going to need. They're out of Dayton, Ohio. And they make 15 amp and 10 amp variable potentiometers that are designed for industrial use like this is using them. So just a, a word of caution on that. What I do is these can never run any more color than you can barely see they're on. These cannot run orange like it's a toaster. Whatever you do, don't do that. Running them that warm will definitely make the plastic saddle a lot worse and it'll heat this thing up much faster than you need to. I always run mine so you can barely see that they're on. Aside from that, if you run it really hot, you're going to find the wire gets much longer and now it's going to take up the coil that you have built in here, the tension. Now there won't be any tension left because you heated it up too much and this wire will start to do an S-turn inside here because there's no tension left on it. So be real careful when you're done putting your voltage to it that your spring still is straight in the track and not laying on the bottom of the groove. This is very important when you first start up. If you find that that's going on, all we're going to need to do is take out a nail and move it back about an eighth of an inch and pound it back in. Same is true if you end up having slightly too much tension on this and you put voltage to it or your springs are too heavy duty, it will pop this wire again just like a fuse. 
So you have to start out very carefully to find out where your system needs to be. Once you find out the right amount of voltage to put to this, mark your rheostat with a marker or some vinyl tape or something that won't come off so you know exactly what is the maximum amount of voltage. If you don't do that, next time you go to do your next bend, you won't know if that voltage is higher or lower of your first bend, so now you won't know the time to let it sit. So what I do is I time everything. Everything is to a perfect voltage with a uh, digital DVM in line with this stuff, so I know exactly how many volts it's getting. That way I know exactly how hot the wire is getting, and that way I know that my time is going to stay the same if I have regular cooling intervals on this thing with a fan. You can only do one bend, and it has to be cooled down. One bend and cool it down. If you continue to run bend after bend, the actual Maronite gets so hot that it'll start to heat soak, and your bend line will now move out and out and out and out further and further because this material is getting too hot. So we don't want to do that. So let's get back to our other side. We're now ready to fasten this side because we believe we have enough tension on it now. So it's funny that this one doesn't bend and they're both the same spring. I don't understand that part, <laughs> but it's just the weird part of it. You're now just going to close this up and make a loop out of it. So what I do next is I'll put a, I'll put something in here, bend it around it, and then wind it around here like this. I'll kind of show you. This will be tough to do on camera, but we're going to make it work. Put this like, I think we need to back up just a little more. You're just going to wind this around here. Make a loop. Pull it back on itself pretty tight and then just coil itself around. You can see I had a little end on there so I didn't end up jabbing myself with this on camera. Which could have been fun though. And once you get three, four wraps on there, that's plenty. You can cut that off and it will work very well. You know, I might even leave that on there for a spot to put my hookup for my alligator clip. That might do just fine having that there. That might be a really neat idea. But when you're all said and done, this has to float, is the idea. It should be a quarter of an inch to the bottom, it should be a quarter of an inch to the top, and exactly centered for your slot. I don't go any tighter than about 3 16 on these. You're going to need some cooling width or you're going to get this stuff really hot. Next thing you have to watch out for when you make these is that you build the box, not the way I did, but properly. <laughs> There's a bottom in here. You can see by the nail holes that there's a bottom in here. And you can tell there's a top in here too by these nail holes. So this is nothing but a long box. What you really want to do is take this top layer of the box that's inside and move it down. So that there's a channel in there underneath the heating strip that can't get heated. You'll be just heating air. If you make it a perfect box all the way around, you're going to open this up and find out that it's burning this wood inside. So make a hollow underneath here. All I'm saying is put that, put this layer down a little bit when you nail it in. My nail holes should have been here along the side. But you don't learn that until after you've made your first heater. Well, as a matter of fact, I built them all <laughs> the wrong way. All right, so now we have this ready to go. Next is we're going to put our clips on. Let's do some bending. Now these clips, let's do a, a real close-up for you guys here. This is an important part, too. A lot of people go and do this wrong and then I have to remake the strip heater over. You can't hook this up onto your spring. You're going to heat the spring just like a coil, like a, a toaster, and that'll ruin the tension of the spring. So it can only be on the nichrome wire. That's the only place it can be. Now I bent this the wrong way, so this would have to go around one more time. Now it would be neat if there was a little thin piece of Maronite here too. 
because this thing tends to get hot, the little clip. But this is the only place you can put that. Now, the other part I have to talk to you about is how that wire sits in the track after we've clipped it. Once again, we need another view. Now you can see it's pulling on that wire. We can't have that. So you have to do whatever it takes to manipulate your wire outside here. Who knows, maybe you have to tape it to something. I, I don't know, set something underneath it so that this wire can float while it's on. Right now it's floating because the spring's holding onto it with some pretty good tension. There's light tension on there. You can see how it'll bounce in the slot. Nonetheless, you'll have a lot less tension on there once this gets heated up. So you might find that this goes back over to the other side and you don't want that. Your bend line's gonna be right down the center of this crack, perfectly centered down the middle of the crack. So you need the nichrome wire down the center of the track. So that's all about whatever it takes. If, if there's a little nail, a little clip, a little something that keeps this from moving around, do it and you'll be, you'll be good to go, okay? So once we have that figured out, and what I normally do is I'll take the stretch out of the wire and give it some slack the other way. And there you go. She's back to the center again. Actually, I'm the wrong way a little now. There we go. So it is a little bit of monkeying around to get them just right the first time when you hook up. But you don't have to mess with it again. Once it's hooked up, it's hooked up. Okay, we have that. Let's do a bend. All right, let's try heating apart. Watch that clip start to grow. See that movement? That's telling you your heat is about to come. There we go. Now, I would advise orange as your color and never anything more. Your heat soak will be uh, really intense onto the Maronite if you go any further than about the color you're seeing right now. And I don't mean by the color you see that's really bright. I'm talking the wire itself, all right? That color orange. So I'm shading it with my hand just to get the perfect color for you guys so that you see where we're at, all right? Once you have the Maronite warmed up so that you can feel with your finger right at the edge that the Maronite's just starting to get warm, that means that it's time to throw your plastic on, if you will. Let's have a better look for that. Now I have a heat bending support out front of here so that my plastic will be sitting on here so I don't have to hold it. And also, if you cut a board like this and put a dado up the middle, this is a piece of one inch MDF, then it holds down your plastic really nice for you. Now, I've taken the liberty of pre-warming, and if you put your fingers right up to the leading edge, it's just starting to get warm. We're in about a minute and a half, maybe two minutes. Setting a timer is never a bad thing. The second you turn this thing on, get your timer going, and I forgot to set mine. But we're going to set it right away because now we're going to start actually making a piece. So heat, heat bending support, let's call it an inch between. That's where we want our bend. And then I'm going to drop this right on top of here. And the heat now is under the perfect center of this dado. And now I can hold it down with both sides. Oops, I forgot to turn on my timer. There is nothing more important than starting your timer. This is very thin material. Uh, it's 30 thousandths, so this is only going to be about 30 seconds. We're going to be about ready to go. I'm only going to heat from one side because this is so thin that I won't have to flip it back and forth. And you always want to bend away from your heat and that way it won't bunch up into the bend. 29, there's our 30 seconds. Typically 30 seconds is all the more you need for a small little heating form like that. And then you're gonna put it into whatever former you want typically. I gotta shut this off. Now if you blow air from the front here, it'll make it come down. If you blow air from the back, it'll open up the joint. So be careful how you use air with this. If you are just to cool it right now here, you're gonna see this whole thing close up slowly on you. Exact opposite is true. Heat, 
or cool the back, you'll see it open up. It works really slick. Same is true if, if you guys put this thing in a fixture, let's say, and you're letting it cool in the fixture until it's perfectly cool, and you take it out of there and you say, well, how come it changed? It's now not what it was. It's because when you clamped it in the fixture, one face or the other side got more cooling than the other. Whatever side cools more, it'll always bend towards the side that's getting cooled fastest. So you can play games in mitigating that. Let's say, for instance, your bend, like this one is right here, is too far bent on this side, but it's almost perfect over here. Then what I would do is I would aim the air at this direction, right about here, and cool this way. And that would have instantly taken, taken this side and fixed it. You guys play with the air, you'll see what I mean. It works extremely well. But cooling is the next thing we'll talk about. You guys have to have a cooling cycle in between every heating cycle. And let's just say that this thing heats for two minutes. You're going to need a good two minutes of cooling. And here's how I do it. This is just some cheap, and I mean cheap, fan setup where the fans were almost free. And what I did is I just made a unit that I can tip them however I want them. And because we have to have some pretty severe down uh, shot, if you will, at this strip heater, I need to do just this here. And what you're going to find then is you're going to need a minute or two for this whole thing to cool down. And certainly this end's going to cool faster, so you're going to need to make a little more time so that that end can get cool too. But the neat thing about my little system here, this piece of tape keeps this all cool now. You can let the fan blow on it, and if you need a one inch gap before your bend, go ahead and flip that back down after cooling. And now you can keep a consistent piece of plastic on here without it rippling because this end gets hotter because it's being covered up by some MDF. All right, so that's the only reason that tape is there. But now you can do the bends where you need them. If you guys decide to do this system here, it's mighty handy because otherwise you're going to have to mark your plastic on the front and on the back of the left side and on the right side of every bend. That way you can flip it back and forth and have accurate hold downs. You're capturing it in the right spot for heating each time. Get what I mean? So that's your best bet is to really do this thing here. It's so much faster. Now you'll set it for three inches, let's say, and you can keep flipping your plastic back and forth, put no marks on it whatsoever. Another bad thing, if you will, about marking your plastic is most times if you mark it with even a pencil, that heat tends to burn in that mark. And it tends to be hard to get rid of the mark you make. So what I was doing after that was tiny little scribe lines because those don't show up later. I think we pretty much covered everything. You guys just need to be safe with your electrical because these are, unquote, hot. And I don't mean from the standpoint of temperature. You're going to have minor trickling voltage coming through these things. Uh, even on a large strip heater, it'll be about 35 volts. And even though that's a third of reality, or a little under, it's still enough to maybe hurt you. So be very careful with this, you guys. Power is power, and it needs to have lots of respect. You don't have any ground going because I don't have any way to use a ground. So, again, be very careful. If you're not liking the whole electrical thing, don't even get into it. Don't even play with it. If it's something that scares you or you're not comfortable with, there's no reason to even go there. Find somebody else who can help you or a friend of yours who uh, doesn't feel the same, and you guys do it together. You guys let me know what you think. Take care. Be safe.